Hey everyone, I'm Chris, and this is a video about one of the most important features of new FPS, ladders. Okay, so maybe they're not the most important or exciting feature, but ladders are one of those things that have been done a thousand different ways in a thousand different first person games, and most of those implementations have been terrible. Bad ladders are ubiquitous in first person shooters, and almost every first play involves that moment where you approach a ledge with a ladder peeking over the top, and you wonder what's going to happen next. Are you going to step smoothly onto the ladder and climb decisively down to the ground below? Or are you going to bounce off the ladder weirdly like there's a powerful repulsive field? Or are you just really playing a glorified game of lemmings and about to plunge to your doom? In Neo FPS, I wanted to make sure that ladders were done well, but also because of all those different implementations, I wanted to give developers the choice of how they behave in their games. So, how do Neo FPS ladders work, and how do they tie into the motion graph? Well, there's two types of ladders in Neo FPS. Contact ladders and interactive ladders. Both of them have their own motion graph state, and both of them use a transform custom property on the motion graph. If you inspect a ladder object in the scene, such as this one, then you'll see a ladder behavior attached to it. All this does is set the relevant ladder property on the motion graph of any character that uses it, and then provides a few useful bits of info to the ladder state such as the ladder's up vector and its dimensions. All of the movement is actually handled by the ladder motion graph states themselves. This property key value in the inspector is the same as you see here in the motion graph custom properties. It should be noted that this value just defaults to ladder, not contact ladder or interactive ladder, because pretty much every game is going to go with just one of those two options and then stay consistent throughout. The Neo FPS demo character supports both just to show off the features, but this isn't the way that most games would do it. So let's take a look at the graph setup. Here you can see that the ladders are at the root of the graph because they should take precedence over everything else. It doesn't matter if you're walking or you're falling, if you attach to a ladder, then you should switch to the ladder state regardless. This is how I've set it up here anyway, and that's my suggestion, but you're obviously free to implement this however feels right for your game. Uh, the contact ladder here is actually a subgraph, and inside that there's two states. One of these is just a fast version for when you have the sprint key pressed. If we go back up, then we can see that the graph connection transitions into this subgraph if the ladder property is not null, as in if it has been set by one of those ladder behaviors in the scene, and then back out again if it is null again. There is also a connection breaking out of the ladder subgraph if the jump trigger is set, and this transitions to a repulse state. The repulse state uses the ladder transform to get the ladder's orientation, and then just pops away from it with this vector here. You'll also notice a behavior on this state that sets the ladder transform property to null on exit to prevent the character from immediately just transitioning back into the ladder state again. The repulse state is a, it's a really simple state that just acts for one frame and then sets its completed flag. So this connection out here just checks that with a graph completed condition. The interactive ladder is set up exactly the same way, but it just references a different transform property. So that's how the graph is laid out. Let's fire up the demo level and have a look at some of the properties. Now, the demo character does use this motion graph, but it actually clones its own unique instance of the graph on start, which we can edit by selecting the character in the hierarchy here. You'll see in the graph editor it says inspecting runtime graph instance up top. And now as we move around, the graph will update to highlight the current state in red. So if we step onto the leftmost ladder, which is the contact ladder, you'll see the contact ladder state gets highlighted in the editor here and we can look at its properties. The actual climb speed of the ladder is stored in the character's motion data, as we covered in the motion graphs video. The properties that you can change in the state relate to how the character's aim affects their movement on the ladder. Use aim of V is for the vertical, and H is for the horizontal. If we set these both to ignore aimer, then forward is up, and left is left. Notice how when we face away from the ladder, left keeps moving in the same direction, which feels counterintuitive. You can change the H property to aimer absolute to fix this. And now as we look away from the ladder, the direction of movement is flipped to match. We can do the same with the V property to change how the forward input moves as we look up and down the ladder. But you'll see this also added a center zone property. Let's set this to zero at first and take a look. Now as we look down the ladder and press forward, we move down. If we look up, we move up. If we look at the horizon line and hold forwards, Notice how we flip directions far too easily. This is what that center zone is for. 
if we set a 15 degree center zone, then we need to look 15 degrees past the horizon line in the relevant direction to switch up or down. It's just a much more predictable effect, as you can see here. Let's try another option and set both of these to aim a smooth. This means that the speed smoothly interpolates as you look up and down or across the ladder. Here we can see that strafing when looking at the ladder is fast, while it slows down as you look across the ladder. And as we look up and down, the speed increases as we approach that center zone angle. Okay, next up, let's set both these to aim a heading. This means that the direction your character is facing factors in, so that strafing into a ladder while looking across it will climb up, and pressing forward whilst looking across the ladder will move side to side on the ladder. Lastly, let's try setting both of these to aim are all axes. This is similar to uh, aim a heading, but also factors the aim up and down the ladder into the speed. Uh, you can mix and match these as required. The default setup is a simple one that feels natural for slightly older school FPS games, which is to use the aimer absolute for the vertical and aimer smooth for the horizontal. Over to the interactive ladder, and you attach to the ladder by using it. You can then detach by jumping off or by using it again. Once you reach the top of the ladder, the character will automatically step up and over. You can't actually move side to side on an interactive ladder, so there's no horizontal aim setting, just a vertical one with the first three settings from the contact ladder. Ignore aimer, aimer up or down, which is the same as aimer absolute, and aimer smooth. The, uh, the dismount delay property is for when you attach to the bottom of a ladder. Uh, normally moving down at the bottom of a ladder will detach you from it. This delay setting here prevents you from doing that immediately after attaching, uh, and therefore prevents you accidentally attaching and then detaching on the spot. The acceleration multiplier simply affects how quickly you snap to position and change speed on the ladder. The constrained camera and look range properties are the interesting new ones compared to the contact ladder. When a character attaches to an interactive ladder, you can clamp their camera to it so they can't spin all the way around. If we look here in the scene, then you'll see that the character currently can't turn past the plane of the ladder. If we switch off constrained camera, then you can turn all the way around. If we turn it back on and set the look range to zero, we are now only able to look up and down the ladder. And setting it to 270 allows us to turn most of the way around, but still not directly away from the ladder. So that's all there is to ladders at the moment. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, then please get in touch via Twitter using at Yondernauts. You can also visit the website at neofps.com for more information. All the links are in the description below. Have fun and let me know how it goes.